If you're a new graduate dentist or dental student and you want to make sure that you end up in an awesome job and you graduate and you maximize your potential to earn the maximum you can and build financial independence, then you should watch this video. So recently there was a post that 43 doctors applied for a associate dentist position. And so in some areas it's getting more and more competitive. So it's very important to learn how to stand out in a way that it's unique but not weird. I'm Dr. Nagy. I help dentists and dental students and small businesses to maximize their potential to build financial independence. So there are several things you can do and you should really start in dental school if you're still a dental student, okay? So one of the things that you should do is networking, okay? So that's, that's the most important. So you should talk to some dental CPAs, some dental attorneys, dental reps, uh, several dentists in your area where you want to practice. Um, but it's very important that you network and you get to know a lot of people and try to find some mentors who can give you some leads on some positions and jobs that might be opening up. And actually dental reps are usually pretty good at this too because they go to different dental offices and they know which dental office is busy and which dental office might be hiring or looking for an associate very soon even though they don't have it listed yet. So I would start this in dental school. I mean if you already graduated then then I would just start as soon as possible. So but networking is very very important. Number two is really understanding what a employer will be looking for when they're looking for a dentist. So if I can summarize that in one sentence, they're looking for somebody who is, who's going to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. I see a lot of dentists and a lot of dental students really overly focus on the procedures and, and things like that. That's very important, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter if you're part of the problem and not part of the solution. So you really need to show them that you're part of the solution, not part of the problem. So how do you do that? One thing, I mean, it really helps if you have the personality, like you have a likable personality, you're easy to get along with, you're eager to learn, you follow instructions really well. And those are the very things that actually make you successful in dental school. Um, you know, if you're very argumentative and you don't listen, listen well, then you might be part of the problem for the practice, not part of the solution. So that's not going to help anybody. doesn't matter what procedures you can do. So it's very important that you focus on what can you do to help the practice because they're looking for help. They're not necessarily looking to build you financial independence. They're looking for help so they can grow their practice. Okay, so it's important to understand that. But they want you to do well too, and you should do well. I'm just saying that you have to be out for your interest and you have to show that uh, employer that you're going to be part of the solution and you're going to have the practice and you know you're going to follow instructions and you're eager to learn and things like that so that's very important that uh, that you find out what is it that they're looking for are they looking to grow are they looking to just maintain a practice are they looking to add a procedure in a practice so it's good to have a wide range of procedures that you can do but if you just graduate from dental school there's only so much no which comes up uh, to the next point as soon as you graduate start enrolling in different high quality continuing educational courses especially um, surgery, implants, uh, orthodontics is big. Very, very few GPs do comprehensive orthodontics. Uh, very few. So, um, you know, people do Invisalign, but that's not really comprehensive orthodontics. I'm talking like brackets and wires and expanders and extractions, non extractions, things like that. So, um, and same thing with implants and surgery and pros may be comprehensive. Uh, prosthodontics is really good. Uh, like the Dawson seminars have really good information on that uh, and really good courses. So, uh, you know, what broaden your your basis for procedures that's really really important too it's also very important to build a good resume and uh, resume writing is a little bit controversial there is a lot of great content on social media how to write a good resume some people say don't include pictures some people say do include pictures well one thing I do like is actually a QR code that links to your link tree and Linktree, you can have all the different links for maybe like an introductory video that you do, like who are you and, you know, people can, you know, scan your resume and land there. And also, I did this when I graduated from dental school. I have some slide presentation for some of the cases I completed in dental school that I really like. So that was really good and people really found that impressive. Um, and it really, it all relates to your 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 resume and what you're trying to do and so that's a that's a really good practice but nevertheless i would spend some time to write a really good resume there is a person on tiktok i can't remember his name but he has um he's like an hr manager and he has a lot of free tips how to write resumes and he has a bunch of videos on 10 out of 10 resumes that he really likes and he's got a lot of great content how to write resumes so somehow uh, just make yourself stand out in a way that it's not weird, but it's more unique than everybody else. So that's another point. 
Now here's another thing that you can do that's actually worked really, really well for, it worked for me as well as it worked for several of my clients who were looking for jobs and they were still dental students. You can actually build followers while in dental school. So for example, you could, you could have a TikTok or YouTube or Instagram account where you actually create educational videos for patients and you can actually create quite a bit of followers in the area and that's going to help you with a job because can you imagine going to an employer and telling them that I have 7,000 patients that follow me on social media because of my educational content that I've been putting out and they've been dying to come and see me. I told them that I'm graduating from dental school and they want to come and see me. So if I work here, I'll bring all those patients here. That would be a huge plus. You could, you could build a pretty big followers on social media just by um, creating these educational uh, uh, content around dentistry. Just make sure it's not weird and it's not like dancing stuff, you know, nobody wants to see that stuff and it's not like weird, awkward humor. You know, I would just really try to focus on like um, authentic, uh, so not stuffy, but like authentic content around the dentistry that helps patients, that's gonna actually draw patients to you that actually wants to see you. And then I think it's gonna be a huge plus when you apply for a job and you have all these followers from the area that are just dying to come and see you, okay? So I, that happened to me when I graduated from dental school. Back then we didn't have the social media, but I had followers that were coming to dental school that I recruited those patients and wherever I was gonna work, work they're gonna come and follow me and they did. When I found a job, they all came and followed me there and they followed me to dental school first and then they came to follow me at my first job. And now with social media, especially TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and, and, and all those kind of things. It's very easy to build a following group in dental school. And, uh, and by the time you graduate, you actually have like a patient base. And so that's going to be a huge plus. And it's very, very different and very, very few people doing it. Actually, if you look at boxing, amateur, as well as uh, uh, pro sports and MMA as well, and several other um, competitive sports, um, athletes today are almost required to have a strong following base. So they actually do the same thing. So if I want to be an amateur or pro boxer, I'm kind of expected to build my own uh, tribe, which is my followers and social media before they would sign me up for like a, a pro fight um, because it's a lot easier to sell tickets if I already have some followers. So if you get, if you get that, it's kind of the same thing and um, it works really, really well. The other thing I would do is I would find a good dental CPA and a good dental attorney because you need to have your own people who represent just you, but they're also going to help you with find you some leads, especially the dental CPAs. So dental CPAs oftentimes know which practices are doing really, really well. They even know more than, than uh, dental reps, although dental reps sometimes go to more dental offices, um, but a good dental CPA have a contact with a lot of dental offices and um, they will know what practices are doing well and what practices might be looking for an associate and they can put a word in for you. So start working with some dental CPAs and dental attorneys that are going only represent you. And it's very important also so to have an attorney who's going to review your contracts because you want to sign a can you want to have somebody read your contract that goes to all the different things that's going to protect you as well as help you like for example if uh, what are the buying options for the practice where you're going to be working and what are the covenant not to compete if there's anything what benefits do they pay for ce's you may want to ask them to pay for ce's because that's going to help you you as well as the practice if you take some good courses. So uh, if you have any questions, my link is in my bio and uh, I wish you best of luck with finding a good, good position. But if you do these things, I think you're going to have an amazing time looking for a job and I think you'll be able to lend yourself a really good position where you can make a good living and build financial independence. Bye.